In the previous video, I talked about the five types of linear transformations in R2. In this video, in brief, I want to talk about how these extend to three dimensions. This is a useful exercise for two reasons. First, it shows how these five types are archetypical and can be extended, but often with more subtlety. Second, I will also show you how there are new transformations in higher dimensions that are simply not captured by any of these five types, or even any composition of them. First, let me talk about rotations. In R2, rotations were about the origin. In R3, however, I have to choose an axis of rotation. Therefore, instead of, having, <laughs> instead of having just one collection of rotations, I have infinitely many collections, one for each possible axis. The matrix shown here is rotation about the x-axis in R3. The rotation matrix from R2 is put in the yz part of this matrix, showing that those coordinate change, coordinates change while the x-coordinate is fixed, since it is on the axis. Reflections are next. In R2, reflections were over a line. In R3, reflections are over a plane, like reflections in a mirror. Instead of choosing lines, I am choosing planes. In this example, having a negative 1 in the z-coordinate, I change all positive z-coordinates to negative z and vice versa. This is a reflection over the xy plane, the plane that includes the x and y axes. Everything above that plane moves below it, and vice versa. Skews have the same general form. This is a skew that takes the x-coordinates and skews them in the z direction. For R2, I only had two places to add this off-diagonal term, which gave horizontal and vertical skews. Here, I have six such places, which give all sorts of combinations of pulling certain coordinates in certain directions. Dilations are perhaps the easiest to extend. Instead of stretching in the x and y directions, I now stretch in the x, y, and z directions. This matrix stretches the x by 3, the y by negative 2, so that's with the flip, and the z by 7. In R2, projections were only onto a line except for the projection that collapsed everything to the origin. In R3, I can project to the origin again with the zero matrix, and I can also collapse onto lines. However, I can also project onto planes. This example is a transformation that leaves the x and y coordinates alone, but multiplies the z coordinate times zero. This removes any height, sending everything down to the xy plane. It is projection onto a plane. Finally, there are other transformations in R3 that simply don't fit. Sometimes these are even relatively simple transformations. This transformation multiplies all coordinates by negative one. You might think this was a rotation, like it was in R2, or maybe a reflection, but it isn't. There is no plane to flip over that flits this, fits this, no axis to rotate around that does this. Instead, this, instead, this simply inverts everything. This is the transformation that takes, say, a beach ball, deflates it, turns it inside out, and inflates it again. Everything goes to the point directly opposite the origin. This is neither a reflection or a rotation, but some other kind of transformation. Hopefully these two videos give you a flavor for the kinds of operation that arise in linear transformations. For the simplicity of the rules, preserving flat things, preserving linear operations, and the simplicity of the catalog, represented by a box of numbers, a matrix, this is actually a pretty wide variety of types of behaviors that show up in linear transformations.